For 70 years, every digital thought, every file you've saved, every single pixel lighting up your screen has been built on the exact same simple foundation. On and off, one and zero. It's the language of our world. A binary heartbeat that powers everything from your phone to the massive data centers that run our global economy. We've been told it's the only way, the most efficient, the most reliable. But what if I told you that wasn't the whole truth? The binary system wasn't some grand destiny, it was a choice. It was a, a path chosen for very practical reasons that we've been locked into for nearly a century. And the ghost of a more elegant and in some ways more efficient system has been hiding in the footnotes of Cold War history for over 50 years. Back in the 1950s, while the West was going all in on ones and zeros, Soviet scientists built a computer that broke the binary rule, a machine that thought in threes, and then it mostly vanished, sidelined by politics, bureaucracy, and the unstoppable momentum of a world that had already picked a winner. Now, as our own technology slams into a wall of physics and staggering energy use, this forgotten idea is making a shocking comeback, and it could shatter the limits of binary and redefine the future of artificial intelligence as we know it. To get why this is such a big deal, you first have to understand the problem, and it's a big one. The world of binary is facing a crisis. For decades, we had Moore's Law, the observation that the number of transistors we could cram onto a chip would roughly double every two years. This gave us smaller, faster, cheaper everything. It was a golden age of exponential progress. But that party is winding down. We're now bumping up against the atomic limit. Transistors are so small, just a few atoms wide, that the weird laws of quantum mechanics are starting to interfere. Electrons are literally leaking through barriers they shouldn't be able to cross, a thing called quantum tunneling. This creates errors, generates heat, and puts a fundamental roadblock in front of smaller and faster. But the more immediate crisis isn't size, it's power. Specifically, the absolutely insatiable energy appetite of artificial intelligence. Training a large AI model is one of the most computationally intense things humanity has ever done. It takes massive data centers packed with tens of thousands of specialized chips running flat out for months. The energy consumed is staggering, sometimes rivaling the annual electricity usage of a small city. Data centers are already straining power grids and their demand is projected to explode. This isn't just an economic problem, it's a huge environmental one. The carbon footprint of our digital lives is becoming unsustainable. We're caught in a paradox. We want smarter AI, but the very foundation of our computers, the binary system, makes that progress incredibly expensive and destructive. Every calculation, no matter how complex, gets broken down into an insanely long series of simple on or off questions. This approach, while reliable, is profoundly inefficient. It's like trying to paint a masterpiece using only black and white. You can do it, but you're going to need a whole lot of dots. For 70 years, we've just made the dots smaller and put them down faster. Now that we can't, we reforce to ask a question that was dismissed decades ago. What if we could use more colors? To find the answer, we have to go back to 1958 at Moscow State University. The Cold War is heating up. The space race is on. And in a small lab, a team of engineers led by Nikolai Brusensov and the famous mathematician Sergei Sobolev are working on a machine that breaks all the rules. While American engineers were perfecting the binary transistor, the Soviets were chasing a different idea. They didn't just want to build a computer. They wanted to build a better kind of computer. They looked at the rigid, two-state logic of binary and saw how clumsy it could be. They figured there had to be a more elegant way. Their solution was a machine called the Saturn. And it was the world's first modern ternary computer. Instead of ones and zeros, the Saturn thought in threes. It used a system called balance ternary, which is made up of negative one, zero, and positive one. Right away, this offered huge advantages. In binary, to show a negative number, you need an extra bit at the front to say, hey, this is negative. It's a patch. In balanced ternary, negative numbers are a natural part of the system. To make a number negative, you just flip its signs. This one small change has a massive ripple effect. Math operations get simpler and faster. The circuitry itself could be built with far fewer parts. 
Brusensov's team built the Setun not with bulky vacuum tubes, but with cheaper magnetic components and semiconductor diodes. The result was astonishing. The Setun flickered to life in 1958. For its time, it performed on par with much larger and more complex binary computers, and some estimates suggest it was significantly cheaper to build than a comparable binary machine. Word of this strange, elegant machine spread. The great Donald Knuth, a giant of computer science, would later call balanced ternary perhaps the prettiest number system of all. The Seton wasn't just a curiosity. It was a glimpse of an alternate timeline, a future where computers thought more efficiently. Between 1959 and 1965, a factory produced 50 Seton computers. It seemed for a moment that the digital world wasn't going to be so black and white after all. So if the Seton was so clever, why aren't we all using ternary computers today? Why are you watching this on a binary device? Well, the answer is a messy mix of technology, economics, and Cold War politics. First, while the Seton's logic was brilliant, the hardware was a bit fragile. The tech of the era struggled to reliably hold three different voltage states. A binary transistor is like a light switch. It's either fully on or fully off. It's unambiguous. A ternary device is more like a dimmer switch, and the problem was that a little electrical noise or a change in temperature could cause that middle state to drift and corrupt the data. The Soviets had proved the theory was sound, but the hardware wasn't quite there yet. But the bigger problem wasn't technical, it was momentum. The Setun was a university project, never fully embraced by a Soviet government that was more interested in large-scale projects that could mimic the West's binary systems. Meanwhile, in the West, the binary ecosystem was exploding. Companies like IBM were pouring billions into developing binary everything, hardware, software, and programming languages. An entire generation of engineers was being trained to think only in ones and zeros. It was a self-perpetuating cycle. More binary hardware led to more binary software, which created demand for even more binary hardware. The elegant Seton was an outlier in a world that had already picked its team. The project lost funding, production was stopped, and the dream of a ternary future faded into a fascinating footnote in computing history. So what is this magic the Soviets unlocked? How does thinking in threes actually make things more efficient? Let's go back to our analogies. A binary bit is a light switch. It has two states, on, one, or off, zero. To represent more information, you just add more switches. Two switches give you four possible combinations. A ternary digit, or trit, is a dimmer switch. It has three states. Let's call them off, zero, half on, one, and fully on, plus one. Now, see what happens. With just one trit, you have three states. With two trits, you have nine possible combinations. Three trits give you 27. The information density is just way higher. You can pack more information into the same number of units. This has a huge impact on everything. It means you need fewer transistors and fewer wires to do the same work, which directly leads to smaller, more efficient circuits. Think of a traffic light. In a binary system, you might need separate signals for red, yellow, and green. In a ternary system, a single, more advanced component could theoretically handle all three states, making the whole setup more efficient. This is the promise of three-state logic. It's a richer language for a computer to speak. More gets done with fewer moves and less energy. It's the difference between trying to write a sentence with only two letters versus having three. You can do both, but one is just naturally more expressive. And here it gets practical. For example, consider an AND gate. In binary, there are just four possible combinations of two inputs. In ternary, each input can be 1, 0, or plus 1, which gives 27 possible combinations. For decades, ternary logic was trapped in the lab. Clever, but impossible to scale. But now the very problems created by binary computing are forcing a resurrection. The massive power demands of AI have sent researchers scrambling for alternatives, and they've rediscovered the work of Brusensov and his team. And one company, more than any other, seems to have picked up the torch. Huawei. Facing intense international sanctions, Huawei has been forced to innovate in some pretty radical ways. Instead of just trying to catch up in the binary race, they started exploring a different track. And according to their recent patents and research papers, 
they may have made a major breakthrough. Huawei has filed patents for what they call a ternary logic chip. The trick lies in transistors with two threshold levels instead of one, allowing them to distinguish three clear states. From there, they rebuilt logic circuits and memory to handle three-state logic. The performance numbers they've reported in these documents are jaw-dropping. Compared to an equivalent binary chip, their patents claim the ternary design could use 40% fewer devices, consume 60% less power, and operate 20% faster. Let that sink in. A 60% reduction in power consumption. If you could apply that to an AI data center, the energy savings would be astronomical. For the rest of us, it could mean cooler running devices and much longer battery life. However, it's critical to note that these are claims from patents. These chips are not on the market, and these performance gains have not been independently verified as of late 2025. Still, this doesn't seem to be just an experiment. There are reports that Huawei is designing its whole AI ecosystem, like its Ascend platform, with this pivot in mind, though official confirmation of native ternary support remains elusive. It's a strategic bet that the future of high-performance computing, especially for AI, lies beyond just ones and zeros. Now it's easy to get carried away. A 60% power reduction sounds like a miracle, but the road to a ternary future is filled with enormous speed bumps. The first challenge is still physics. While Huawei's patents claim a solution, reliably manufacturing chips with billions of three-state transistors is an unprecedented challenge. Ternary circuits are just inherently more sensitive to tiny imperfections than their binary cousins. But the far bigger obstacle is inertia. The entire global technology stack, from programming languages to apps, is built on the assumption of binary. We have invested trillions of dollars and decades of work into perfecting a binary world. Switching to ternary would mean rethinking everything. We'd need new compilers, new operating systems and new algorithms. It would be like trying to switch the whole world from driving on the right side of the road to the left. Not impossible, but a monumental undertaking. For this reason, a complete replacement of binary is unlikely anytime soon. Binary is still great for most tasks. Instead, the most likely path forward is a hybrid one. A world where specialized ternary coprocessors or AI accelerators live alongside traditional binary CPUs. These ternary engines would handle the really heavy, energy-guzzling workloads, like AI training, where their efficiency gives them a critical edge. Your phone might still run a binary OS, but the chip that powers its smartest features could be thinking in threes. So how do we get over these hurdles? The answer might lie in new materials. The noise and precision issues are a problem for silicon, but researchers are now working with materials like graphene and even more promising, carbon nanotubes. These are tubes of carbon just one atom thick with incredible electrical properties. Their physical structure makes them naturally well suited for creating stable, multi-state devices. In fact, Recent research has already demonstrated experimental ternary chips built with carbon nanotube transistors at 32 nanometer. The results were impressive, showing 45% less area, 30% less energy for the same AI operations compared to binary equivalents. These materials could be the key that finally makes ternary computing not just viable, but superior at mass scale. But even as this is happening, Another, even bigger transformation is on the horizon, quantum computing. Just recently, Microsoft announced a major step forward with what they call topological qubits. The key advantage here is stability. Most quantum bits or qubits are incredibly fragile and easily thrown off by the slightest disturbance, leading to a lot of errors. Microsoft's approach aims to create qubits that are naturally protected by their physical structure, making them far more robust. While current chips are still experimental, Microsoft believes this architecture provides a path towards scaling up to the level needed to solve problems that are impossible for any classical computer, binary or ternary. We're talking about designing revolutionary medicines, discovering new materials, or maybe even developing catalysts that can break down microplastics. This is a different kind of revolution. Ternary computing is about making our current computers way more efficient. Quantum computing is about building a new kind of computer to solve a whole new class of problems. 
we are living at a wild inflection point in technology. The digital world is about to go through its first fundamental change in nearly a century. Forgotten ideas are being resurrected right alongside things that feel like pure science fiction. So what do you think? Is the future a more efficient version of the past, with ternary logic powering our devices? Or is it a quantum leap into a totally new reality? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you enjoy breaking down the technologies that are shaping our future, consider subscribing. It really helps us dig into these complex topics and bring you the stories of the breakthroughs that are about to change our world. The ones and zeros that built our world aren't going to disappear overnight. Their monopoly, however, might be over. We are entering an era of computational diversity. A future where the elegant logic of ternary computing, once a Cold War relic, will likely work alongside the raw power of binary. It could power the AI in our pockets and slash the energy footprint of the cloud. At the same time, the strange and wonderful physics of quantum computing will open up entirely new frontiers tackling the impossible problems of tomorrow. The simple two-state system was the workhorse that got us here. It built the modern world. But the challenges of the future demand new ways of thinking. The ones and zeros that defined the 20th century may not be the only numbers that define the 21st. A more complex and powerful computational language is finally emerging from the shadows and it's about to change everything.